What it do, everybody? We back with another episode of Wrestling with Exotics. It's your boy, the champ that runs the camp, the face that runs the place, franchise Jerry. And today it's 420. Now I wanted to start this 420 off right. Today I done brought out the Gravity Bomb. I haven't named her yet. I'm still thinking of names. Y'all give me some name suggestions in the comments. And then I got my girl Jenny right here. Jenny, this a bad bitch. Alright, and then uh, I forgot to mention the gravity bomb is also laced with a time bomb. A time bomb is basically where you put like a roach inside of a bowl and then you put some tree around it and then you put some wax on the sides of that mug and then or even on top and then watch that motherfucker burn slowly while you hit it out the gravity bomb. And this gravity bomb I'll be smoking like that all the time because I'll be getting extra cooked. I ain't gonna lie to y'all. This get me a whole nother level of cook. But uh, to go along with that, I also brought out the puff coat. If you know, you know. The cleanest way, the best way to take a dab. I also got some fire ass live resin to go with it. Two types. I can't remember the names, but I got two types. Along with some good za, of course. That's mandatory. In today's show, we're just going to be going over some news. You know, a lot of shit happened these past two weeks. And uh, we're going to be catching up. Today is actually TNA Rebellion. I'll be going to that. That's at 4 o'clock, so I can't stay too long and talk about wrestling. But we're going to make sure we touch all of our bases. I'm excited for that. Nick Namath versus Moose will be the main event for the TNA World Championship. I just interviewed Nick Namath in my last episode. Make sure you guys go check that out. And hopefully... Today he wins his championship. But aside from that, we're going to talk about our second news topic of the day. Liv Morgan taking out Rhea Ripley. Now, this is payback. I don't understand why everybody's so damn salty. Everybody's seeming to forget that Rhea Ripley took Liv Morgan out and put her on the shelf for like six to eight months. When she was tag team champion. So she had to drop her belt because of Rhea Ripley. So, you know, eye for an eye, shoulder for shoulder. And it's crazy because you wouldn't have thought what Liv Morgan did would cause such a crazy ass injury. I mean, all she did was really throw a chair at her and then just start hitting her. And then Rhea kind of like slammed into the wall kind of awkwardly with her arm. So that's how she ended up getting hurt. But it wasn't like Liv Morgan did anything too crazy. I'm just, you know, to be real, I'm happy that they made her drop the belt. Why pull some Seth Rollins shit and sit on the shelf for so damn long and put the belt up to where nobody can compete for it? Like, come on now. That shit's not right. So, I'm happy she did drop the belt, but I'm not happy that she got injured. They will be having a tournament on Monday Night Raw to determine who will be the next Women's World Champion. So I'm excited for that. Right now, I really want to see Nia Jax win it. I feel like she deserves it the most, but I really wouldn't mind if Liv Morgan wins it. I would love to see Liv Morgan win it, but like I said, Nia Jax just deserves it a little bit more. And it just makes sense for Nia Jax to be Women's World Champion. Like It just fits her, fits her mold. Who's going to stop Nia Jax? Who's going to take that shit away from her? Liv Morgan? No. Nobody can handle her. Becky, she's walked her. She's walked pretty much everyone on that Raw roster, so I would love to see Nia Jax win. Hopefully she does, but if she doesn't, then hopefully Liv Morgan is the next step to get that championship. All right, we about to take the first rip out of Jenny. She got some Zaza mixed in with some wax, a little tea back, so that way you know you get that cool head change and uh, got a little keef on top, so this is your perfect combination in one. Let's get to it. <coughs> Let's talk about our next topic. That's Solo Sokoa forming a new bloodline faction with his cousin, Tama Tunga. And, well, I don't really know who else. We don't know who else is in this group. And we don't really know who's exactly calling the shots for this group. Right now, it looked like Solo is on this past Friday Night Smackdown. He came out in a suit, looking fly. 
actually talking and, and whatnot, and you like, oh, okay, so well, you do got this side. You're not just an Umaga character. And I felt like they was probably listening on my podcast, and they was like, yeah, no, we're not going to let them go out like that, Jerry. You think you know something, but we're going to show you something different. And, it, hey, if I influenced that, I'm happy to say I did. Because, yeah, man, don't let Solo go out like that. Solo need to be winning championships. He need to have a world championship. He should be the next rising star that you guys are working on, you know. And I feel like giving him this faction is the perfect way to get that started. Now, you also got Jacob Fatu, who just signed to WWE. He's in the company, too. So we're going to see if he joins this bloodline group. And we're going to see if Solo Sokoa is the actual leader. Or if Roman Reigns comes back and he tries to be the leader, or maybe even The Rock. And I feel like The Rock is going to end up joining Solo's team and kind of taking over and Solo taking a backseat. Or I could see Roman coming back and Solo pressing Roman like, I've been doing this shit, holding it down, and you've been at home licking your wounds, bro. Why the fuck am I going to give you back the position ahead of the table? No, nah, you got to come take this shit from me. And hopefully at that point in Solo's story, he'll work up enough credit to where it's believable that he can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Roman Reigns. So, hey man, it looks like they got something interesting booming for the bloodline uh, once again, which I definitely did not expect. It took a crazy-ass turn. Solo Sokoa out here bullying Paul Heyman. I feel like Paul Heyman about to be taken off the screen for a little bit. They might have Solo Sokoa doing bad and put him on the shelf along with Roman Reigns just so you, so you know uh, the wise man could get a break and whatnot. So I'm, I'm interested to see what uh, comes from this. I definitely didn't see this shit coming. This actually makes it a little bit more interesting and hopefully they show a savage side of the bloodline because that's what I want to see. That That's Samoan craziness. Like I don't want to just you know see Roman come out here and kind of bore people to death with his entrance and then come out here and say a few words and then disappear from TV for three weeks. I don't want to keep seeing that. I want to see people get beat the fuck up. I want to see, you know, carnage. I want to see the bloodline take it to another level and show like, yo, we ain't nothing to fuck with. Like, you got cool ass names like the tribal chief and shit. Like, you should be wanting to display a certain aggression and 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 be on the same type of time that Solo is on. But, you know, you're not. And that's why you getting kicked out your own group. And it looks like Roman might end up having to go to Raw and form a faction with Jey Uso. And speaking of that, the draft is next week, starting next Friday, which means everybody will be eligible to be drafted anywhere, including NXT, which I'm excited about because this means NXT is turning into a main roster. They're starting to bring big names over there, showing you that we're not just trying to be a developmental brand no more. I'll be watching NXT and I'm like, yo, these competitors low-key ain't nothing to fuck with. Like, I feel like a lot of these dudes could have great matches with anybody on the main rosters today and give them hell. And sure enough, every time Carmelo Hayes got brought up or Grayson Waller got brought up, Braun Breaker, they showed out. So I feel like they kind of influenced NXT to take this turn from developmental to actual main roster which I'm excited for. I can't wait to see this shit. I feel like that's how it should be in this new era because NXT has always evolved. You know, NXT has never just stayed the same. Like the first NXT used to kind of be like a game show where niggas was doing obstacles and shit like that. And then it became real competition. And, you know, and like I said, back in the day, like NXT used to have a pro. Somebody from the main roster is basically big bro in you and you're under them, like Daniel Bryan and The Miz, for example. So, you know, NXT has always developed and, you know, they've always had world champions from other companies end up being NXT champion. Look at Shinsuke Nakamura. Uh, look at Samoa Joe. Um, look at Adam Cole, baby. There's, you know, the names go on and on. So you can't just keep calling this a developmental brand. You know, NXT's worked up that credit and it's, you know, a new era. Let's get it. All right, up next, I know y'all been waiting. We're going to go ahead and hit this gravity bomb. Now, like I told y'all earlier, this gravity bomb really ain't nothing to fuck with. I haven't hit it in quite a while because, yo... If I hit this shit, usually I'm done for the day. But just for y'all and 420, we're going to make it happen. So this is how you get it started, Captain. You know, you light the time bomb up top. 
And as you lighten the time bomb, you go ahead and flip that mug. You basically just keep lighting it and flipping it until it really catch. Use the tube, kind of like a hookah tube, and just keep flipping it. And hitting it like that. Now, I could just, you know, take off the tube and then just hit it normally out this shit like that. And the smoke would come out right there. But... I don't really like doing that, and that would be a little too much on this show to look a little crazy. It's already a little crazy hitting it out the tube like this, so, you know, you got to hit it like a thug, you feel me? You can't just be hitting it any kind of way. You got to hit it on some cool shit. You got to be on some cool shit. But you definitely got to pause that <laughs> at the same time. But yeah, let's talk about our next news topic. <laughs> WWE introducing new <coughs> tag titles. Yo, the tag titles that they brought out on Raw and SmackDown, these joints is fire, yo. I love the way that the Raw titles are set up and they're no longer called the Raw titles anymore. They're called the World titles, which means they're eligible to go anywhere if need be. And they're not labeled by the actual brand. Which I like. I don't like those red belts and the raw label and, you know, the blue belts with the SmackDown. That shit is, like, corny as hell. I like the old classic looking belts that didn't belong to any company. If they switched, they switched and there was no issue. And as I mentioned earlier, it's a new era. So it's dope that Triple H is bringing these belts back. It's been a long time coming, too, because <coughs> they've had these damn belts for a cool-ass minute. I've been waiting for them to finally change these shits. Them shits was ugly as hell. As I mentioned earlier, this is a time bomb, and as y'all can see... <coughs> We almost at, <coughs> at the end of this motherfucker. Oh my lord. <coughs> I'm gonna be so good. <coughs> I ain't gonna lie. I gotta go to the TNA Rebellion today. And hopefully I don't fall asleep in there. I ain't gonna lie to y'all. I look you be falling asleep in some, some of these events. Depending on how boring the match is. Like if the match get boring. I'm, I'm low key gonna be dozing off. So. I'm low key gonna have to give me a Starbucks or something. <laughs> give you some espresso, yo. Just so that way I could be able to stay awake in this motherfucker because, yo, I'm getting extra cooked. This gravity bond already got me wanting to just end the show. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie to y'all. All right, let's talk about AEW Dynasty. Dynasty will be premiering this Sunday. You guys can catch it on the Bleacher Report app or your local movie theaters, depending on who's playing it in your area. Hopefully this episode drops before then, so that way you guys can get these predictions. So yeah, let's get it. I'm going to make some match predictions. You guys let me know who you think will win down there in the comments, and uh, let's get to it. The first match we're going to be talking about is Swerve Strickland versus Samoa Joe for the AEW World Championship. I definitely believe Samoa Joe will retain this championship. This is prime Samoa Joe, and his character in this story is very believable, and I'm pretty sure they're gonna give him a little bit more run than just the two months, and he's only defended it like twice, so I'm pretty sure they're gonna keep this going. And then you also gotta factor in Samoa Joe's veteran experience, so I definitely see him retaining. No disrespect to Swerve Strickland, He's going to win it, but not right now. It'll be a little bit more down the line, but I feel like if he's not up next, he'll probably have it by the end of the year. Next match, we got Will Ospreay versus Brian Danielson. I believe Will Ospreay will go over in this match. Brian's known for putting over new talent, so I'm pretty sure he'll take the L to Will Ospreay. And Will Ospreay also been talking kind of crazy to him, like, man, you know you wasn't nearly as successful as me in uh, New Japan, so I'm about to prove it to you. Next match I want to talk about is for the Continental Championship, and that's featuring Pac versus Okada. 
I definitely believe that Okada will go over. Pac will be a great contender for this belt. This is going to be somebody to give Okada that much more credit. And I definitely believe that this is going to be a four to five star match. Next we got Kyle O'Reilly versus Roderick Strong for the AEW International Championship. Now this match is about to be dope as fuck, I ain't gonna lie. They're gonna pretty much knock the hell out of each other and I feel like Roderick Strong is gonna retain it in this match as well. I don't feel like any titles will be changing hands at all actually. Let me see. Yeah, no, no titles will be changing hands. Maybe Julia Hart versus Willow. Julia might lose it. She's had a long reign with this match, but that's not box office. I would rather her retain her belt and then she defend it against Mercedes Monet and Mercedes Monet be the next TBS Women's Champion. I would like to see that. And I for sure believe Tony Storm will retain her AEW Women's Championship against Thunder Rosa. I don't really see titles changing hands this pay-per-view, but these matches, they're going to be some real good matches. AEW put together a fire-ass card. Um, I feel like AEW's been getting a little bit underrated lately, but they're in a stage right now where only real wrestling fans are going to watch them. And what I mean by that is only real wrestling fans watch other promotions and enjoy it just like WWE. You know, some people only watch WWE and don't watch nothing outside of that. And I've interviewed and only talked to people that know about that, which I got an interview dropping real soon that y'all like uh, with <clears throat> somebody from your childhood. So I got that in the works. But yeah, aside from that, that's why AEW is getting underrated because it's only wrestling fans that are watching it. They got to figure out a way to get their brand seen on a wider scale. To where they're getting the viewership that they want on a consistent basis because i know they've been under a million lately so and they haven't been able to fill up arenas which is why the tickets have been a little cheaper so <laughs> make sure you guys tap in for them when they in your city but yeah AEW, you know they're going in the right direction i enjoy the program i don't like AEW rampage that's like the worst show to watch i don't even know why it's a show at this point they got such a cool name for it, but they don't do nothing cool on there. They put all the scrubs on there, and it makes the show not watchable. Aside from Rampage being a terrible show, other than that, they, they do a pretty great job with this show. And they do a really great job at all of their pay-per-views. I've enjoyed every pay-per-view I've been able to watch. So, shout out to AEW. And I will also be going to AEW Double or Nothing, so I'll give you guys an update on how that goes. Ooh-wee, y'all. Uh... I ain't gonna lie, I'm cooked. I'm about to get the fuck out of here. But before I go, the last match I want to talk about is Cody versus AJ Styles. Now this is gonna be a fire ass match, I can't lie. I feel like they are gonna put on at least a four star match. Especially with Cody Rhodes and AJ Styles uh, move set and experience, I know they are gonna tear the house down. So. I'm excited to see that match. Cody is obviously going to retain in this match. This is going to be a, a, a good first title defense. And this is also a good name to give him credit. So with that being said, I can't wait to see how this match goes. And when more matches unfold, I'll get on the show and get my predictions on that as well. But right now, like I said, I got Cody Rhodes winning and retaining the WWE World Championship. Now imagine if he did lose it to AJ Styles at Payback. That shit would be crazy. Yo, the fucking internet, it would break the internet, for sure, for sure. <laughs> that would make no damn sense to be this high. I'm about to go to this event, I'm about to nod it off. I don't want to be that nigga in the crowd that's nodding off. They're going to catch me on camera. You know, these be live events, yo. These is taped, you know. <laughs> I don't want niggas to be able to look back and be like, hey, you see that's Franchise Jerry right there, sleep. <laughs> yeah, because I'm off that Zod, nigga. Leave me alone. Shit. I, I, what, what do you want from me? It's 420. I didn't tell them to schedule the event on this day. Nah, I ain't gonna lie. I was gonna get cooked regardless. I get cooked before every event. I gotta go in there nice and mellow and chill. You know what I mean? 
I'm real introverted in public. Like, I don't like talking to people. I don't like fucking with people, you know what I'm saying? I get cooked and stay in my lane. Like, I really don't be fucking with nobody, you know what I'm saying? Ugh, fucking Jenny. Like I said, y'all, this got that wax. This got, this got everything you can put on it. We related. I don't do that other shit. <laughs> What I don't want to hit is this damn gravity ball. I ain't gonna lie to you. <laughs> <coughs> that motherfucker is something serious. It do karate. I'm telling you, I'm over here trying to give these predictions, and I couldn't even get through them. I'm not even gonna lie to y'all. That was probably the hardest subject I done talked about at this level of fadedness. <laughs> Like, just even saying that, this has been one hell of a day. The day ain't even really started yet. And I'm just posted up, getting cooked. God is good. You know what I mean? This is what my job is. Sitting here, getting cooked, entertaining y'all, talking about some good old wrestling. Now, let's get to it. Now, I know I said I wasn't going to hit this motherfucker, but come on now. We on TV. We gonna hit this motherfucker. Make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. Share this shit with the fucking world. I really appreciate y'all. But, uh, yeah, so, I'm gonna hit this for y'all, man. Yeah, when this motherfucker hit the very bottom, hit that bomb, I was like, uh, nah, I'm done off that motherfucker. That's when I couldn't get through the dynasty part. I was like, ooh, shit. I don't know if I'm gonna make it. <laughs> Alright, let's get to it. Fuck. Oh yeah, you guys see this shit in motion. Ooh wee. <laughs> oh shit. Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh the Oh wall. To the wall. Oof. Yeah, this year right here ain't nothing to fuck with. Happy 420, y'all. This is the franchise kid reporting to you live. The champ that run the camp. Once again, I done did it again. Out here with another episode for my friends. You heard. I love y'all, man. I would never get this clip for anybody else. <laughs> All right, y'all. I'm about high as hell. I got to get ready for this event. I don't know how I made it through this show. I did everything but take a dab. I only could hit the bong like once or twice and the gravity bar a few times. That shit tore me up. I, I could barely even get through this damn show. I'm cooked. I ain't even gonna lie. Happy 420. Thank you for tuning in. I love y'all. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Share this with your friends. Oh my god, I got a whole fucking joint still. Like, this is the shit I'm talking about. I did this for y'all, and I love y'all again. Also, make sure you guys go check out my website, Players Club Franchise. Get y'all some Players Club gear. Get fly real quick, and again, share that shit with everybody. I appreciate y'all. Have a good 420. Peace.